welcome, 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 welcome. Worship song as we Jehovah prepare. Jehovah. Hello everybody, welcome, welcome to We're just going to wait a few minutes for others to join. Okay, okay, you are welcome. Let's just 
Welcome in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Uh, let me just put up my. Yeah, okay. Yeah, let's have a word of prayer. In Jesus' name. Everlasting Father, we appreciate you and we honor you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for a time like this. Thank you for a season like this. Lord, we are grateful because you've given us another opportunity to look into the scriptures and to also talk about the truth. One of the key things we know in our generation is that the peddling of lies has become louder and louder than the gospel. But Lord, we are bent on making sure that the gospel takes its proper place in our generation. And Lord, as we look at this critical issue that has become a major matter in our generation, we pray for wisdom, we pray for insight. We yet ask, O oh God, that you would draw your people from the east, west, north, and south. Many people don't understand the gravity of what is on ground. But Lord, we understand that this matter is no longer a joke. We've come to understand that, Lord, that what you're doing, what the enemy is doing is to harvest the next generation, destroy the next generation, and make evil popular make evil normal such that people are unaware that they are being sucked into hell we pray that you help us as we look at these things tonight speak to our heart we pray for our children that these ones will come to the knowledge of the truth that they will be able to take what they are going to learn from here and liberate their friends liberate their colleagues liberate their, their their family members who think these things are just jokes not knowing that they are being covenanted into evil we pray that you will speak unto us expressly we honor you and we exalt you we give you all the glory we give you all the praise in jesus precious name we've prayed amen amen thank you very much for coming and um, it will be good if we can see you. So I'm sure that um, I'm talking to human beings, that I'm not uh, speaking to, you know, uh, the world where we are today now. It's a very, very different system, different world. So it's important that we, um, yeah, please, if you can put on your video, let me see your face. Let me be sure that. I'm talking to human beings. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so much. That is good. Wonderful. It doesn't matter whether you are home or not. At least I know. Yes, wonderful. Good. God bless you. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to take that off, uh, yeah, that would be good. But at least I know you're there. Wonderful. Great. So let's quickly... Um, dive into what we want to look at today. Who can tell me? Anybody who is what on? What did you say? Yeah, Judah. Thank you. I wanted to see your face. That your handsome, wonderful face. To know that you're 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 not uh, playing or you're not sleeping, and then you've just put on your Zoom. Wonderful. Okay. So who can tell me what is Halloween? 
who knows what Halloween is about? Let's let's have that discussion first before I put on my slide. What is Halloween? I'm going to explain that. Well, <clears throat> Halloween is basically a celebration of yeah, Halloween is a celebration where children who go out of their houses to go trick or treat, get sweets from people's houses. Okay, thank you. That's good. That's one definition. Anybody else? Yeah, thank you, Enoch. Yeah. Or is it Daniel? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Halloween is a tra 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 tradition that um, English people do uh, to celebrate October. Okay, to celebrate October. Okay, that's that's a good one. That's one way of looking at it as well. Good. Anybody else? Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah. Oh, there's somebody on the camera on the uh device that says Stella. Do you want to say something there? Um Halloween is a tradition and I think Halloween celebrates the dead. Okay, celebrates the dead. Mm, that's a very critical information. Celebrates the dead. Mm, that's good. Well done. Well done. Well done. Good. Celebrates the dead. Mm, I like that. Now, it's important that we understand. Yeah, Judah, you wanted to say something? No. Oh, okay, that's all right then. So we'll mute you then until when we want to talk. Okay, let's all focus so that we are all on the same page. Now, what we want to look at is we're going to look at where the, what's the history? Because I, I, it's important. If we don't know the history of something, it's very easy to assume the wrong thing. And that's why it's very easy to be deceived if you don't know the origin of something. So that's why what we want to do today is to check where exactly did Halloween come from? What is it about? We want to know. So that's why what we're looking at today I, I, I titled it Parents, Children, and the Church Talking About Halloween. We want to talk about it. We don't just want to assume. You know, somebody said it's about, uh, it's looking at maybe celebration of October or things like that. Yeah, it could be it, it holds in October. Halloween actually is celebrated on the last day. That's why today is the day that they celebrate Halloween. So it's the celebration of several things. But one of the things we notice about Halloween is that it's all shrouded in so much secrecy. So they tell us some things, but if you look at it, you need to know the history to be able to understand why we are where we are at the moment. So what do we need to know? What do we need to do? And what shouldn't we do? So those are three things. We want to know what it's about. We want to know what we can do. And we want to know the things that we are not supposed to do. So we're going to look at it from that context. And then um, my name is um, my name is Kolade Aki, and um, I'm a mentor. I'm a pastor. I'm quite a number of things. But today I'm going to be the facilitator. I will be running through this. So please, if you've got a question, make sure you either put your hand up or you type it into the chat box. That might be a good one. So that we are not interrupting ourselves, I will pick up those questions if you put it into the chat box. So let's look at it. What is the history behind this particular event? So let's look at it. It says Halloween might seem like fun with costumes and candy, but its origins and tradition reveal a much darker reality. And that's where I'm going to start from. So we understand that, listen, it might look like it's fun. If you go into all the shops now, you see everybody's buying this. They've colored all the place, pumpkins all over the place. Yeah, it might look like it's just a joke. But as Christians, we know that, listen, in this world, there are two things. It's either there's light or there's darkness. There's no middle ground that, oh, it's just a bit of a little bit of darkness and a little bit of light. No. It's either there's the absence of light, and that means darkness is there, or there's the presence of light and darkness runs away. 
So it's either of those two things. So as Christians, it's essential to understand the roots and symbolism behind this holiday before choosing to participate. We're going to watch a, a clip in a few minutes. We're just going to watch a bit of it. At the end, I'm going to put it in the chat box so that your parents can take that link and then you can watch the whole of that um, video. It's a very, very good video. You're going to enjoy it. It's going to tell you quite a lot. And you need to watch it over and over again so that you understand what the message is and you keep that you know, at the back of your mind as you go through your day-to-day -day activities. Okay. So Halloween is, isn't just a night of festivities. It has its origins. Okay, sorry, just some somebody's having a problem getting into the meeting. Let me just see what it is. Okay. Okay. Okay, so Halloween is just is not isn't just a night of festivities. It has its origins that trace back to pagan rituals and beliefs, some of which directly conflict with Christian values. So what we're saying is that the 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 background is that it used to be something that had rituals that were involved, and when you look at pagan rituals, some of them involved the shedding of blood. That's why we need to look at it critically. In this video, we'll uncover the true history of Halloween and what it means from a Christian perspective. What does the Bible say about these things? Get ready to discover a reality that may change the way you see this October night. So what we're looking at tonight is, is very, very important because if you don't know something, it's very easy to take it lightly. If you don't know that a snake is going to kill you you just think oh i can just play with it i like the way it's very soft i like the way it's hissing Psst. no so, so you might just think it's just a joke and it might look like a joke oh i i, I like that animal oh it's looking really nice it, oh, it's very friendly yes it might look friendly but at the same time what is friendly can also become very very deadly very very deadly so that's why it's important that we ensure that we don't joke with these things at all we need to be very very careful with them very very careful so let me quickly move on so i'll put on that clip now and then we will move on so okay let me just okay so let's go to the clip let me stop sharing this one and then I will share. Yeah, let me share the the um, video. So I want you to all be attentive. Let's take this off. Okay. Just a minute. Good. So I'll share this with us and I want you all to be focused. You need to be really, really focused because it's important that you do that. Let me share this. Uh, where are you? Okay. Okay. Every year, on the last night of October, it feels as if the whole world comes to a halt. Children run around dressed as witches, ghosts, and monsters. Homes are filled with glowing pumpkins and spider webs. It all seems harmless, doesn't it? We've all been there, participating in this night of scares and laughter, convinced there's nothing wrong. But have you ever wondered what you're really celebrating? It's no coincidence that images of death the macabre and the occult dominate this holiday. Halloween isn't just a night of costumes. It's a festival that historically glorifies death and the devil. Did you know that on this night, while children are trick-or-treating, many Satanists and witches celebrate one of their most important days? For them, Halloween isn't a game. 
It's Satan's birthday. Yes, you heard that right. Invest in Salford Keys, a waterfront community that's fast becoming one of Manchester's coolest hotspots. Perhaps you're thinking, is it really that serious? Isn't it just another holiday? That's the trap. Everything appears harmless because that's how evil works. Disguised as fun, like a wolf in sheep's clothing. Halloween wasn't born as a children's holiday. It emerged from pagan rituals, where ancient Celts tried to appease the god of death with sacrifices, even human ones. They believed that on this night, spirits of the dead roamed the earth seeking bodies to possess. That's why they wore costumes, to blend in with the dead and avoid being captured. But that's not the most disturbing part. What's most unsettling is that today, thousands of years later, we continue celebrating a holiday with the same symbols, unaware of the true message we're embracing. Isn't it strange? While we dress up as ghosts and witches thinking we're just playing, we're unknowingly taking part in a celebration designed to honor death. What does the Bible say about this? The answer is clear and quite frankly terrifying. God is not a God of the dead, but of the living. So what are we doing? Are we committing a sin? The answer to these questions lies in history, in the origins. The pumpkins, costumes, ghosts and skeletons all have a specific reason. Hidden in its origins is a story that few know, but one that we all should hear. It all began more than 2,000 years ago. In a distant land where nights were longer and colder, Celtic tribes waited with fear and superstition for the night of October 31st. For them, this wasn't just any ordinary night. It marked summer's end, the beginning of a dark season, when days of light and harvest faded away, giving way to shadows and cold. They believed that on this night, the barrier between the living and the dead dissolved. But what's most disturbing isn't that, it's who this celebration was dedicated to. According to ancient Celtic beliefs, this was the night when the Lord of Death, Samhain, walked among the living. The spirits of the dead would roam the earth, searching for bodies to possess. To protect themselves, villagers would extinguish their fires, leaving their homes cold and disguise themselves to deceive the spirits, making them believe they too were dead. People lived in constant fear of these spirits. For them, the dead didn't rest in peace. They returned angry, seeking revenge or a body to possess. The tension was so great that the only way to protect themselves, they believed, was through sacrifices. And not just any kind, but human sacrifices. Yes, we're talking about rituals where human lives were offered to appease the Lord of Death and keep spirits at bay. It's terrifying, but real. People extinguish their bonfires to make their homes appear cold and empty, undesirable to wandering spirits. In a desperate attempt to deceive them, they dressed in animal skins and heads, transforming themselves into something resembling the very creatures they were trying to protect themselves from. They say that even the carved pumpkins with haunting faces emerged from these practices. But as Celtic peoples became Christianized, some of these rituals merged with Christian beliefs. This celebration was adapted by Christianity, which tried to give it new meaning. They called it All Hallows' Eve, the evening before All Saints' Day, with the aim of bringing light to this dark night. Picture for a moment that time, so different from today. It was the year 800 AD, and Christians were preparing to honor the saints, those who gave their lives for their faith and lived in extraordinary ways. The night of October 31st, All Hallows' Eve, was the prelude to one of the most important days in the Christian calendar, All Saints' Day. The air was filled with hope, not 
terror. Darkness wasn't celebrated, but overcome. It was a spiritual preparation, a time of deep reflection, of gratitude for those who walked before us, showing the true path to light. And today it remains so in many communities. Around the world, this day is experienced in different ways, but the heart of the celebration remains the same. In some communities, people go to churches where bells ring loudly, reminding us that there is something beyond earthly life, that death is not the end. Churches fill with flowers, candles and songs that evoke light and hope. In other places, processions are organized in the streets where people carry images of local saints. Those who were living examples of faith in their own communities. It's a moment of unity, of shared faith. But the Eucharist remains at the heart of the celebration. During each Mass on this day, the faithful unite not only with those physically present, but also with the saints symbolizing Christ's light that overcomes any darkness. Families sit beside the headstones, sharing stories, praying together, celebrating the lives of those who are no longer physically present, but remain in spirit. It's an... Okay, just a minute. If you have an hour this week, you can learn a hundred songs on the piano. I'm learning just four chords. Please. Okay, just a minute. Check it out. Amen. Okay. Now, so let's just quickly review what we've looked at, what we've seen in that short clip. Like I said, you will have the chance to be able to go back and um, look at that yourself. So before we do that, let me quickly go back to my slide. Because I think that's really where I want to go over quite a number of things. So, uh, we've looked at that, that first slide. We looked at what the history is. Who can tell me what they got from that clip that we watched? What did you learn? Well, what I've learned, basically, they say that Halloween is basically Satan's birthday. Okay, Satan's birthday. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Anybody else? I learned. Yeah, go ahead. I learned that when you see something friendly on ha uh, Halloween, you can never know that the thing can become very deadly. Yeah, yeah. You might not know that it's very deadly because it looks like it's okay. Yeah, Judah, you want to say something? Why don't we say? Because we don't celebrate Halloween. Okay, we don't. Yeah, we want to look at why today. Well done. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, anybody else? I learned that Halloween is the devil's birthday. It oh, celebrates death and the devil. Halloween yeah, is not just about costume and fun. Christians call Halloween Hallowed Eve, the night before Halloween. They made okay. the houses cold, which is uninviting to the spirits that passes the houses. Hmm. Well done. Thank you. That's somebody who was taking notes. Sorry, we have two people online. I'm just seeing iPhone. Please, we want you to put your name so that, so that we are dealing with uh, human beings, please. We want to know your name. Uh, even if it's just your first name, you don't need to put your surname. iPhone uh, does not really help us because we are dealing with children here. And that's why we want, actually, we want your videos to be on so we know we are dealing with... Uh, uh, people yeah thank you very much that would be really helpful uh the two iphones please if we can't change that if you can't change it let me know i'll do the changing for you else we'll have to remove you we don't want to we, we, we want to be sure that um uh yeah okay enoch yeah you want to say something or is it daniel enoch and daniel yeah you want to say something uh, we don't celebrate halloween because it's the devil birthday well and done. because it used to be pagan ritual well done it used to be pagan ritual well done. okay so let's quickly move on um please if you're not talking you mute yourself judah don't unmute yourself again yeah thank you okay so let's quickly move on um yeah 
So we've looked at that aspect. So Halloween is an annual celebration. But what is that? What celebration is it actually of? And how did this become? We've looked at a few of those things, and we know that now it's a multi-billion-dollar uh, uh, industry. Why? Because people sell things. They sell costumes, candy, food items, party items, greeting cards. They organize tours to so-called haunted houses. You know, there are places where they look for a place. They say, this place is haunted. There are ghosts in there. And people pay money to go in there. And they don't understand that they, what they are doing is not a joke. It's a dangerous thing. Uh, the UK, those of us based in the UK, we understand we are not really behind. In the US, it's much bigger than it is in the UK. But the UK always tries to get in touch to make sure we are not left behind and that's why you see all the shops now if you go into all the shops in the whole of the country all the major stores you will notice that in all those major stores what we have now are full of halloween things halloween treats uh, candy uh, sweets um, costumes uh, um, um, books that celebrate all those things that's what you have at the moment but we are going to be talking about the truth so uh we're looking at it so the story may surprise you it says and we i think we looked at a few of these things um there's a keyword that came out it's in that green box chief among this was the fire festival called samain called um, pronounced Sowain, yeah something like that observed at harvest harvest time so to mark the celtic new year or the Celtic New Year. And the Celtics are people that are in Ireland, in Ireland. That's where it started from. But most of those people migrated to America. That's why it's still being celebrated in a different form in the US. Uh, yeah, so that's important. So please, I made a request a few minutes ago that if you're on this Zoom call, please, can you put your name on your, uh, on your Zoom, please? We don't want to just have zoom user iphone we want to know who is online i don't know how to i don't know how to do it though who's who's that ebby pardon ebby ebby okay i'll do that for you is that e b b y e b b i e okay e b b i e yeah thank you okay so we've done that ebby you're done thank you good thank you very much one more to go Okay, so that's the first aspect of that. So, what is the history behind this? We've looked at it. Um, but the second part is what I want to focus on. It says, after the Roman Catholic came, the Celtic peoples in the 7th century, um, came to the uh, Celtic people in the 7th century, some of their traditional folk customs were adopted by the church. You know, it's one thing to say something is bad and to say stop it. And it's another thing to say, okay, it's bad, but what we're going to do is we're going to now try and make it look like a Christian thing. Most times that thing, what you've tried to do is you've only tried to change the color. You've not actually dealt with the problem. So it's, and that's a, that's a dangerous thing to do. If somebody failed an exam, instead of going to repeat the exam, if you go and change your result on your report card, you've not passed the exam. You've only done something wrong. You've only cheated yourself because you will not be moved to the next class because you didn't pass the exam. And that's what happened here. The Roman Catholic Church, instead of stopping it totally and saying this is incorrect, in a bid to be able to win those people into the church, said, okay, don't worry. That thing you're doing will change the name. And we'll now do it a little bit like this so that you can start coming to church. So they came to church, but they didn't leave behind the evil practice that they were involved in. And that's a major problem. So, and that's why you see the, you know, in the video we watch, you can see that people were carrying statues. They were going here, going to all those things. They, they, they were still doing what they were doing, but they now changed it and now put a Christian name on it. You can't put a Christian name on something that is not correct. And that's where all this came from. 835 AD, the church, um, um, they moved the church's Feast of Saint, um, of All Saints from the spring to November 1st to replace the observance of Samay. 
So all saints they still observed today by many honors believers who had died. It was supposed to just be an honor. But we notice that people don't just honor, they now start praying to those saints, telling those saints to help them, which is not what the Bible expects us to do. So the night before, which featured a sacred vigil in church, became known as All Hallows Eve or Halloween. But the old practices of the Druids died hard. It stayed and were denounced by the church as witchcraft. So, and that's what we saw. So it now, we now discover that people did not want to stop what they were doing and they continued even though it was given a different name. So that's how it became known as a holiday. So tonight, so what we're looking at that, so it's important. So the result is that Halloween today has become strongly associated with the occult and a preoccupation with the dead. Two influences that scripture and the church have always warned against. The Bible says we must not speak to the dead. We are not supposed to pray to the dead. We are not supposed to pray with the occult. Play with them. You don't play with the occult. You don't play with, they say, trick or treat, or they say, uh, I'll cast a spell on you. No, that's not expected of a Christian. But those are the things that it says. Now, who can read that scripture for me? What is on that screen there? Ephesians 6 verse 12. Yeah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, mm -hmm. but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In high places. Well done. It says our battle, the battle of the Christian, is not against physical people. So we don't fight against physical people in the real sense. Our battle is against spiritual it says against principalities powers these are things you cannot see these are things that you, these are spirits that you cannot see they don't you 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 don't go 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 outside of your house and you see them uh, sitting in front of your house no they are spirits the only thing is that they inhabit human beings to carry out what they want to do so if a spirit wants to do something bad it's not just going to do it by itself it looks for a human vessel to enter into, give the person the thought, and make the person do what it wants to do. So when we want to fight against those for the, the somebody's done something, we don't focus on the person first. We focus on the spirit that is behind it. So when we talk about Halloween, it's not just the costume that we are dealing with. You can remove all the costumes from the shops, but in the heart of people, the idea is still there. And that's what God wants to take away. So, we need to remember that. Now, why shouldn't we celebrate Halloween? One, it glorifies death. So, the, the aim is to make sure we look at death in a different way. Death is not a good thing. Death is one of the consequences of Adam and Eve sinning against God. So, it's important for us to realize that death does not come from God. Death is a result of man's own choosing. So man chose death, not because God wanted man to die. God wanted man to live forever. And that's what man is still going to, that's still what's going to happen to man eventually. Man is going to live forever. The question is, where is he going to live forever? Is he going to live forever in heaven or is he going to live forever in hell? Those are the two options. There's no middle ground. And as young people, you need to understand that. So, really important. This is really, really important. What we're talking about here is important. Now, the scripture plainly tells us in Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. Who wants to read that for us? Somebody else. The scripture plainly tells us, Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 to 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree in the garden of thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For, for in the day that thou eatest, therefore you shall surely die amen thank you so much that was wonderful god told them says of every tree in the garden you may eat mommy comes and says listen everything
thing in in in, uh, in the fridge you can eat that one but you see that candy on the table or that biscuit in the can don't touch that one most of the time which one do you really want to go for the one in the fridge or the one that mommy says don't touch who can tell me which one do you think you really want to check out anybody which one do we normally go for yeah somebody wants to answer you've unmuted yeah say something the sweet on the table on the table that's the one we normally want to check out why did mommy say i shouldn't touch that one that's the question we normally ask the fridge might be full of other things mommy says don't touch the biscuit in the can or don't touch the biscuit i kept on the table in my room say mm, mommy says i shouldn't touch it why did she say i shouldn't touch it then you go and check it out and then you look at it should i or should i not that's the same thing that happened to adam and eve god told them he says every other tree you can eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it he says for in the day that thou eat it in the day that you eat it you will surely die but did adam and eve die that day did they die no they didn't it looked like they didn't die it didn't didn't it looked like they didn't it looked like they, they were still living they still met, had a meeting with god they still had children but the death that God was talking about was not first the physical death. It was a separation between them and God. So God didn't create man for man to die. Man chose to die. God says, if you do this, this is the consequence. And that's what happens at home as well. When mommy says, don't do this, or daddy says, don't do this. That if you do this, this is going to be the consequence many times we try and see mommy does not really mean that oh daddy doesn't really mean that daddy loves me he's not going to he's not going to do that but the bottom line is that when you do it if you read your book you are, you surely the, the probability of passing your exam is very high if you don't if you don't do your homework you're surely going to get in trouble in school so god told adam the only thing he was not to do was to eat from this tree but if he did he would die it reminds me of a kid. If you tell him not to do something, he will do it or bust. So that's that's what happened. That's who we are. That's how we as human beings are. Adam was just like you and I. He had to touch and taste the untouchable. People might say, oh, but it was Eve that did it. No, they did it together. They did it together. They were one. How many of you have seen a sign that says wet paint? Anybody? You've seen a place where they say wet paint do not touch and then you went there to check you put your finger on it to check whether it was whether the paint was to be touched or not that's how we are as human beings so we make decisions and every decision we make has a consequence so if we decide to go and do what god says we shouldn't do there's a consequence and that's what this halloween is about if God says don't do it, you shouldn't. Because it glorifies it. The second understanding we must hold on to is that death is an enemy. Now, when we talk about death, we are not talking about, it's not the first, the, it's the separation from God first. It's an enemy. But also, the devil in John chapter 10, verse 10. Anybody has a Bible there? Can you read John chapter 10, verse 10 for me? If you have a Bible, and I expect you to have one. John chapter 10, verse 10. Somebody reading? John chapter 10. Verse um, 10, yeah. Uh, John chapter 10, verse yeah. The thief come not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have if more abundantly. Amen. See, the thief comes 
with one agenda. One agenda. He's got one business. Let me read it from the Amplified Version. Look at what the Amplified... It says, the theme comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. So what God comes to do, what Jesus came to do is to give you life. What the devil comes to do is to give death. He comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So death is an enemy. It's not a friend. Separation from God is the goal of the enemy. And we must make sure we don't fall into his trap. We are in a battle with an enemy called death. That is why death is an enemy. It's because it destroys life. It takes away. Whereas God is the creator and author of life. In God's original creation, there was no sin, nor pain, disease, or death. Remember, a man chose to sin. So this is important. The Bible teaches that death is the enemy of mankind. Final thing that says the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. And that's what they glorify in Halloween. That's why you see them dressed like skeletons. What are they looking at? Death. Somebody who is alive is not a skeleton. A skeleton is not alive. If you want to see skeletons, you go into the biology lab. You go into, into the mortuary or you go into, in, into an undertaker's place, maybe somewhere there when they've done some things to the body. I'll be going to into the hospital where they are doing some research. So that's important. So why shouldn't we celebrate? Because it honors Satan and demons. This is important. It honors Satan and demons. God is not honored on Halloween. Have you ever seen anywhere where they are doing it and they're saying and they're singing praise and worship and they're thanking God? God is not even mentioned. Satan, witches. And demons are the things you will hear all through the celebration of Halloween. And the Bible teaches that Satan and demons are the enemies of mankind. So that's important that we know that. Who wants to read 1 Peter 5, 8 for me, please? Somebody else. Good. First Peter chapter five verse eight. Be yeah. be sober. Be be vigilant. Vigilant, vigilant because your adversity, adversity, adversity. the yeah. devil as ro a roaring lion, walk walk about seeking who may he devour. Good. Who, who can tell me what that means? Somebody else. Who can tell me what that means? What does that first Peter 5 8? What, what is it telling us? Prudence. Our providence. What does that mean? Is providence there? Unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah, what does first Peter 5 8? What does it what do you think it's telling us? And It's telling us that we should be, we should be vigilant, and we should look like, look around us and know what is happening, and like, like have the mind of Christ in you, so you can know that, so that when you do wrong or if you do by wrong, you know that it is wrong, so that you can re repent back. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? What is that scripture telling us? What's it telling you as a person? First Peter 5a. Be sober, be vigilant. Anybody? We're in school here. So I expect people to, to talk. No hiding. You should be on um you should be aware of whatever that's happening around you and know what's going on and be ready to fight. Um yeah. any temptation, I don't know. Good. Thank you very much, Abby. No, it says be sober. Be, when it, when it talks about being sober, it says be well balanced, self disciplined. You need to be disciplined. That's what being sober means. You are disciplined. Because somebody, if a soldier 
you notice if you look if you've if you've noticed people who are soldiers or people who are in the in the military or people who are secret in secret service when they are walking they're observing everything that goes on around them they they, they don't just walk into anywhere if if they are driving they're observing everything on the road they're vigilant they're disciplined they don't just do anything everybody else might be doing everything they don't because they understand that they are at the battleground every time of the life their lives the moment they enlist in the army they know that they have enlisted in this army for life even if they finish their term if they resign they are almost like in reserves if anything happens they are called to resume again so because your adversary who is an adversary somebody who is against you since the adversary of human beings is the devil he says, like a roaring lion, he walks about looking for somebody he will injure, somebody he will take down, somebody he will, whose life he will mess up. And that's what he cloaks, that's what he keeps on that wrap with all this celebration. So it takes people away. People spend almost three months preparing for this one night. People spend so much money buying costumes. They bought one last year, they will buy another one this year. They will buy the same things this year. There's a shop around where we stay. That shop only opens almost once a year, or maybe twice a year. It opens now. It was it been closed since last year December. They just opened the shop again, and the person who owns the shop is paying for that shop. And the only thing they sell there are uh, all those um what do you call it? All those fireworks. And all those things that's all the that's the business this guy does so it's short all year he's only interested in selling those things at that period and there are shops also in london that i knew where we were staying before they shut them all day all year round they only open them when it's getting close to things like this so that people will come there to come and buy all the things they need for that period so they they, they, they understand that this is a, a business to get people to capture them and the bible says be vigilant so this can happen that in school you are being introduced this you need to understand i said listen sorry i cannot be part of this my faith says i cannot i don't have a problem if other people want to do it but for me as a christian i cannot be involved in this the bible says through the scripture satan is described as he is the God of this world who blinds people's mind. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, it says, The God of this world has blinded the minds of the people. He is the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the earth. So all those scriptures there shows us who the devil is. And that is the one that is behind all these things that we see. Now, why don't we celebrate because it honors satan and demons satan's purpose in making war against two, uh, god's people is twofold satan's purpose is power and worship to receive as much of the power and worship of the universe as possible so you notice all he's doing is to get people to focus on him on this day when they're doing it they don't sit down nobody's going to go out tonight and spend 10 minutes praying that lord as we go out tonight uh, putting on this costume help us to to win people to come to heaven nobody is going to do that tonight they are not going to pray that god is not involved in any part of this celebration whatsoever and anything that god is not involved in anything that god is not at the top of you don't put yourself you don't get involved at all. Satan's purpose is to hurt and cut the heart of God. Why? Because God has judged and condemned him, condemned him for rebelling against him. Therefore, Satan does all he can to get back at God. The best way he can do it is to turn the heart of people away from God and lead them to sin and to follow the way of evil. So, and that's it. He gets people to turn, and that's what he did to the children of Israel. God led them out of the wilderness. Uh, led them out of Egypt after 430 years and they are not gone too far they began to worship idols he led them to turn away from God and to turn onto idols that were made with gold and silver and he's still doing that today so people are going to turn away from reading their Bible today turn away from praying to God 
And what are they going to be doing? They will be celebrating the dead, celebrating skulls, celebrating witches. Why? Because they don't know. So, people seen on Halloween, that's just the bottom line. People dress in horrible and occulty costumes. All of this is seen. It is considered the holiday of hell. Participation in idolatry is fellowshipping with devils, and the devil and his angels or demons are behind all idolatry. Whether the idolatry is by a hidden society or an educated society. So it doesn't matter whether we are in the first world. No, sometimes because we are in a developed country, it makes it look like because people dress, you no, know, because they, they, they look a bit posh when they put on those costumes. It looks like, oh, it's really okay. It's not really that bad. No, it is bad. If something is bad, it doesn't matter whether it's whether it's in the first world, the second world, the third world. It doesn't matter where it's done. It's still sin. Sin before God is sin. It doesn't matter whether it is um, 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 uh, the the sin is is committed by young people or old people or middle-aged people, men or women. It is still sin. That's the way God sees it. Okay. So we we'll look at this, and um, we looked at that scripture before, but let's look at the one in uh, uh, the the um, the amber one. Who can tell? Who can read that? The, the one in will I call the amber now? Or yellow now? Let's let's who can who can read Second Corinthians eleven fourteen and fifteen for me. Anybody unmute yourself. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great sin if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. He says, don't, don't be surprised. That's what, and marvel not. Say, don't be surprised that Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. You see, and that's why they make it so, so appealing. All over the, the, the TV is there. I, I, I went inside a shop today and I have an app where they will give you um, points and things like that and they will give you free gifts. And I got in there and they had, because I had bought things to a particular amount, they gave, they, 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 there was an offer on my app that if I click on the Halloween treat, I said, me, you are going to treat me? into getting a treat. I said, I don't care whether you are going to give me a bonus of 100 pounds. I'm not clicking on this at all. It was almost like, oh, but it's your shopping. No, I said, no, I'm not clicking on this for any reason. I don't care how much you're going to take off my shopping. I would rather lose that amount than get something that it was clearly stated. <laughs> clearly stated there. Let me, let me see if I can find that app. It was so funny. And I was there, I was looking at it, I said, wow, this is not, they're not even hiding it. Right in front of me there, they put it there. Yeah. Let me, if you are looking at my screen, what can you see on my screen? Let me see if I can put my, can you see that? What's he showing? Spooky surprises. Spooky surprises, yeah, that was the app. Can you see that there's a box there? There's a surprise at the back, at the end of that. And that was what they gave me today. Funny enough, I was going out today. You no, know, we're having this program today. And that's what they're trying to tempt me with. <laughs> oh, you just do some few shopping and get a spooky surprise. I said, no, you are the one that is going to be spooked, not me. So you can imagine. There were so many goodies behind that screen. But I'm not interested. Why? Because I understand that that is how the devil operates. When you click on it, you don't know what else he leads you into. So you run. Amen. So let's, uh, we're, we're almost at the end of our slide now. So this man wrote this. He says, let me explain why I don't agree with Halloween. J. John is a man that I really, really love. He, he, he He's very, very funny and he gives very, um wonderful explanation says first halloween deceives us about evil it creates a cartoon vision of evil as trivial harmless fun that no one could possibly see as a threat yet all evil is serious 
and any messing with supernatural evil particularly so. To fool around with evil is a fool's game. Can you see that? It deceives us about evil. It creates a cartoon version. So you see all those uh, the pictures. Oh, it's not really anything bad. It is. Look at what he said next. Halloween distracts us about evil. So it distracts people about evil. It presents e e evil in terms of obvious and spectacular things that proclaim their identity with fangs and claws, cackles and cloaks. Look at how they do it. Yet it is evil that is most seductive when it is silent and subtle. The most dangerous evil are not clumsy figures in skeleton out with knocking on your door. They are infinitely better disguised. In the real world, the most deadly evil doesn't turn up with nocturnal, nocturnal cries of trick or treat. Instead, it tiptoes around unannounced in broad daylight. It is there in the sudden opportunity to lie, gossip, slander, steal. So there's so many things. Halloween obscures, obscures the fact that most evil wears a charming face. So what this does is to make sure we don't see those things anymore. So people now focus on those scary things. And it looks like, oh, it's not really scary. And they take their eye off the ones that are really, really horrible. So don't be deceived. Finally, Halloween denies the defeat of evil. In Halloween, the supernatural evil is presented as unchallenged and victorious. So that's what it is. That evil, is what is supposed to be evil, is winning. It's okay. As a Christian, I believe that that's only half of the story and the dark, darkest half too. The reality is that evil has been defeated at the cross. So that's why I'm not afraid of anybody. So you, 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 you can't be scared by the devil coming in to your, you know, coming to your door, to knock your door, and you're scared. Oh, no, you're not. It's a time, and we're going to look at what do we do when we encounter these situations. And one day the crucified king, Jesus Christ, will return and abolish every, even the memory of it forever. That's not Halloween is the story that I want to celebrate. So we should celebrate the fact that Jesus won the victory. That is, that's what we want to celebrate. And it's not even celebrating it at Christmas. That's not the celebration. It's a celebration every day to say Jesus is Lord over my own life. Jesus is Lord in our home. Jesus is Lord in my school. Jesus is Lord even in my own bedroom. That's what we want to celebrate. And that's how we need to celebrate. So not this one that is celebrating death, that is celebrating skeletons and pumpkins and uh, scary faces. It is out of this. There, there was a movie they showed some years ago. Uh, it was horrible. They called it Saw 1. Saw 1, Saw 2. I think it got up to 4. Very horrific movies. And everybody was watching them. There was one they called Sabrina the Witch. Became so popular. There was one they called different kind of horrible movies. But you see, they made it look so okay. It's not really bad. It's just a movie. And I discovered that there were several people. I had a boy in my class. I had a young boy in my class who began to play with the occult because he started doing things like this. And then he came to class one day. Let me share that story. He came to class one day. I hope we are all focused. I'm seeing some people playing on the, in, on the screen there. You need to focus. He came to class and he told me, he said his cousin started to play with the Uja board. Uja board is a way in which people try to contact spirits and they try and levitate. And then he contacted those things. And he said, my cousin went mad. He, he, he had a mental health problem and they had to, 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 to section him. They had to put him in, in a mental health institution. And then he now came to school and started, he said he wants to also investigate the same thing. And he began to play with those things. And that became dangerous. And I discovered that very brilliant young man, his grade began to slip because he was now spending more time in the night checking out all these things. And we had to report him officially because he will come to school, he will not have a bath, 
He will not have his belt. He will come to school. His uniform is scruffy, dirty, is smelly because he was spending a lot of time trying to find out more. And that began to affect his own mental health. And um, it was God that helped us to deliver him in that school. So it is, it is utterly impossible to participate in the true worship of God and in the worship of devils. So this is important. You can't do the two. It's either you're serving God or you're serving the devil. So you cannot drink of the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Who can explain what that is to, to us? Any of the young people? Yeah, from, I'm looking at, yeah, Brother Dave will die his house. Who is going to help us there? Somebody should explain what this means to us. Cyprus, what did you say again? Yeah, who can explain what 1 Corinthians 10 21 is saying? There's no space that you will have. Anybody? He cannot drink the cup of the Lord and he. And, and the cup of the devil. He cannot be partake of the Lord. Table of the De table of the devil call mm -hmm. call uh, <laughs> yeah so who, got, who wants to explain what that means um i'll try yeah okay you try yeah okay mm, i think it's um trying to say that okay, you understand. can drink from the cup of the lord but uh, and the cup of the devil you he can't Good. Well done. Okay, Daniel. Yeah, thank you very much. It means that you can't worship the Lord and worship the devil at the same time. Hmm. Wonderful. You can't worship the Lord and worship the devil. You can't do the two. Yeah, uh, Providence, or is it Gabriel there? Or uh, Gideon. Where's Gideon? Gideon, let me hear you speak. You've not Gideon. Um, he's just saying um, you cannot serve like you cannot serve two masters. Oh. Excellent. You can't serve two masters. You can serve God and then serve the devil. It's either you're serving God or, or you're serving the devil. You can't do both. So that's important. So you can't celebrate Halloween and then come to church and come and celebrate Jesus. Is it that you want to celebrate Jesus or you celebrate the devil? Let's meet ourselves. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very, very much. So let's let's quickly move on. We're mm -hmm. almost at the end. Take heed to yourself. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. I told you to mute yourselves. Thank you. Don't unmute again until I tell you to. Thank you very much. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. This was what God told the children of Israel. He says, be careful that your heart is not deceived. And that's why we are holding this program today. Be careful that your heart is not deceived. Be careful that you are not deceived because you are in the first world. You know, it's very easy to be deceived. Oh, we are in England. Oh, it's not really bad in England. Oh, things are a bit okay. You see, it's very, very... Oh, no, no, you see, it's not really bad. We can we can watch it. Oh, we can watch that, that, that horror movie. It's, it's, it's just a movie. Yeah, it's a movie, but somebody had a spirit... There's somebody, something that inspired the one that wrote it. Where did he get the inspiration from? It's not, what you see on the, on the screen might look like just ordinary things. And we've seen people from watching those things, they've gone ahead to carry out exactly what they've seen in those things. Because there's a spirit behind everything. So don't discount it. Don't say, oh no. Say, take heed. Be careful that your heart is not deceived. And you turn aside, turn away, and serve other gods and worship them. So when you participate in things like this, what you're doing, in essence, is that you are serving another god. You can only serve, you, you must either serve the god that created the heavens and the earth, or you're serving something else. And we must understand that as young people, as children, 
God is the one that we serve. We don't serve any other God. We don't serve anybody else. We don't, we don't worship any other God. We must worship God that created the heavens and the earth alone. It's important. Because the enemy will try and get you to look at those things. See, it's not really bad. It's not really that horrible. It's just, it's just a cartoon. Oh, it's just a, it's just a costume. It's not really bad. Beloved, my, my wonderful people here, it is bad. It's either something is good or it's bad. It's either something is, and only God creates what is good. It's only God. Yeah, if you've got a question, wonderful, our God is a jealous God. Please, if you've got a question, you can type it in the chat box or any comment, just put it in the chat box as we are going ahead. Don't play with it, not just anything. You need to make sure it's something that is important, yeah? Don't just clog the place with um, funny comments, young people, yeah? Okay, so let's go. So let's move on. Why shouldn't we celebrate Halloween? Because God himself hates it. Because he doesn't celebrate God. Halloween is not a celebration of God. Anything that doesn't celebrate God is what you run away from. But some might say, oh, but, uh, but what, what, what about sports? You see, sports is an entertainment. It can also lead to something else. We're not saying it's wrong. I play sports. I, 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 I watch sports. But you see, if you begin to put your whole effort into it such that you forget God, then it can become an idol. So we need to be careful. But this one, this one we're talking about is pure celebration of death. Celebration of death. They say is the sit it is Satan's birthday. That's what we read learnt from the video we watch. He says, I God says, I hate every false way. In Psalm 119, verse 104. Every one of them. Not some, not a few. He says, every false way. Anything that is not true. Anything that is not true, God hates it. Anything that is not true. That's why the Bible tells us that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I, not, not anybody else. He says, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Okay, so what should we do when we meet people who celebrate Halloween? What should we do? I've put one there, but I've taken it off. Who wants to tell us? Who is using is it Naomi there? Xiaomi. Naomi? What should we do when we meet people who celebrate Halloween? I've put one there. Love them and share Jesus with them. What else can we do? What else can we do? Anybody? Daniel, yeah, thank you. Um, Daniel, yeah. You can become friends with them and then as as you're talking with them, you can like talk about how Jesus is how much how important Jesus is, and how how he loves you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much, Daniel. That is powerful. You tell them how much Jesus loves them and he cares about them. That's important because most people don't understand that. That's why they go for the other things. Well done. Yeah, Providence and Co. Yeah, who is there? Is it Treasure or Stop yeah. It's Treasure. Okay, treasure, yeah, okay. We should inform them of the danger of Halloween. We should okay. inform them of the danger of celebrating Halloween. Okay, yeah, we tell them about it, but we tell them in love. So we don't tell them in a way like uh, we're, we're, we're saying something bad and tell them, yeah, tell them God loves them and that Halloween is the devil's time. Well done. Thank you very much for that. Wonderful. So you can still type in the box, yeah, okay. Uh, who else? Wants to say something? Okay, wonderful. Good. Good. So I also want to say something. Okay, yeah. Maybe, um, well, we shouldn't go out on Halloween. We don't want to um, 
Yeah. We don't yeah, want we're, to. We're looking at what do we say to people who celebrate Halloween? That's the question. Well, um, we should tell them that they should be aware. They should be aware that they that aware of dangers and most of all, what what's coming to them. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So we tell them what this is, what Halloween is about, and the dangers of it. Because what it does is that you see the key part of this is that when you start to celebrate this, it takes your heart away. Gradually, you begin to see that. You don't really want to stay where they, they're talking about the things of God. It draws you nearer and nearer to things that are not true. So that's why you must make sure you run away. It might be in school. It's getting to the time of Halloween. They say, oh, we're going to have a, a Halloween celebration. Everybody's going to dress in a costume. Get your parents to say, no, sorry, we don't celebrate Halloween. And parents, send a note to school. My kid does not participate in Halloween. Let them be aware. There's no law against it that they have to participate in Halloween. Anything they're doing that you don't want your children to be involved in, please inform the school. Yeah, Prov uh, Providence. You want to say something? Is that Gideon or uh, Providence? Providence. Stop. Okay. Make your intentions known that you're not doing it because like you hate them or you or you hate the city. Oh, yeah. Make your attention like you know say that you hate them, you just that you don't want to be like part of it or something like that. Wonderful. Yeah, you want them to understand that you care about them. That's why you're doing what you're doing. You're not doing it because you hate them, you're not talking to them about it because uh, 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 uh you don't you, you uh, because you are better than them. You're doing it because you care. And that's really, really important. We that we must make sure we 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 understand that as we talk to people we must talk to them with love we must talk to them in love so we are not talking to them and talking them down oh like we are better than them no we are not better than them we just found mercy is the grace of god that is available okay god says i hate falsehood we looked at that before now this is important now this is something i saw today and um it came a bit late, but I believe that is something we can prepare for the coming year. Uh, it says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Our home does not celebrate Halloween. Thank you. It can be a note. It can be something you, you laminate and you put on your door on this night. So that when they begin to move around, once they get to your door, they will not even press your doorbell because they see it. But... The key part of it is that one that is at the top. It says, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. What you've done is you've sent a message to whoever comes to your door to be able to go back home and read that scripture. It sets a question in their heart. I remember some years ago, they were celebrating Halloween in a place where I stayed. And I went out that night to go and minister to people who were doing Halloween. And I saw these young people, these young boys and girls, they were all dressed up and they were rushing on the street. And they came to me, trick or treat, and I stopped them. I said, why are you celebrating this festival? Why are you doing this? Are you Christian? They said, yeah, we are Christian. I said, so if you are Christians, why are you doing this? Don't you understand that this and this and this? And one of them said, oh, you've just spoiled tonight. Oh, no. It's true what you said. And they said, I'm going home. And that's how all of them dispersed and everybody went back to their homes. All because I challenged them. They knew the truth. But nobody had explained it to them the way I explained it to them. And that's how they went back home. And I still do that. And I'm planning to do that tonight. When they come to my door, I'm going to share the gospel with them. Why? Because it's important. Refusing to participate is making a statement like the three Hebrew children. We are declaring that we only serve the living God, Elohim. Good. Because if you keep quiet, you are saying, yes, it's okay, you continue. But if you say no, we are telling them we are not part of it and this is the reason why. Good. Now, look at this one. It says trick or treat. What if you tell them and they got angry? What will you do? You, you don't have it. You are not. You are not doing it. You are just telling them the truth. 
that you just explain to them look the way you've come to knock on my door to sell halloween to me i'm also selling jesus to you so it's not i'm not doing anything wrong i'm just telling you that this thing is not correct you can accept it you can ignore it that's okay i still understand you still remember that jesus loves you and that's where you end it and you say have a wonderful night it's not an argument you're not fighting them you're just saying lord sorry we don't participate in this look at this a trick or treat this is for parents and this is for you as well because you're going to be parents very soon who are who are you teaching your children to serve? No one can serve two masters. Either you hate one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. Matthew 6, 24. So this is really important. Really, really important. Oh, people are still coming in. Wow, and we're almost finished. But we'll go back to that video. You should not answer them so that there will be no fight. You should not answer them so that there will be no fighting. Yes, they, you don't answer them in a harsh way. You just say, thank you for coming. But do you mind if I share with you why we don't celebrate Halloween? They say, no, 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 we are not interested. They say, that's okay. But remember, Jesus loves you. And that's it. You close your door. So, you sow a seed. When you tell somebody Jesus loves them, what you've done is you've introduced Jesus into that equation, into that question. People tend to go back home to remember that. And what I'm trusting God is that next year, we're going to plan. Let's to, let, let, God gives us, I pray that, that that's... The Lord will tarry that we will still be around here. We will prepare materials so that when people come to your door, you have it. It might even be that we'll go and buy. That there, I know that there are, there are various things that people do. There are some candy that people do now that contains the gospel. There are small, small tracks. Where with the Chick Publication, there's one called Chick Publication. C-H-I-C-K. Chick Publications. And they have materials for, for Halloween. Also, you have um, livingwaters.com. They have materials for Halloween where you can get them, you can buy them, and you have them in your house. So when somebody knocks on your door, you give it to them. I'm printing some this night that I'm going to give out to people that come and knock on my door. So when they come, I hand it over to them. I say, sorry, I don't do trick or treat, but I, I want to give you Jesus. They might say, I don't want it, that's all right, but I've sent a message and they can leave. So they will remember that somebody told them about Jesus. So that's really, really important. So I will stop this sharing briefly, and then we will come back. So we're going to watch um, the second part of that movie uh, quickly. we still got a few minutes, so the next 15 minutes, I want you to be focused as we quickly check on that. But before we do that, I want to see everybody. I want to make sure everybody is here. Can you put your video on? Let's see your face. Let's know that we're dealing with human beings here and not... Uh, people dressed in costumes <laughs> let me be sure wonderful 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 thank you very much this is great wonderful i'm seeing people from various places if you can do something for me tell me where you're joining us from so let's look at uh yeah D dave udai where are you joining us from i can see quite a lot of people in that place tell us where you're joining us from thank you, thank you. Sheffield, wow, that's a long way. Sheffield is very far. Wow, let's give them a round of applause. All the way from Sheffield. Wow, that is powerful. Wonderful. Who else? Tell us where you're joining us from. Yeah. Okay. Paul, yeah. We are joining you from Plumstead, London. Wow, Plumstead. Wow, that's on the south side. Wow, God bless you. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's just clap for them. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Yes, who else is there? Yes. Okay, I'll call the names so, so that we can do it quickly. Zion Akin, where are you, where are you joining us from? I'm joining from Aylesbury, Stoke Mandeville. Oh, Aylesbury in Buckinghamshire. Wonderful. Let's give him a round of applause. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Annabelle, where are you joining us from? Um, I'm joining from Aylesbury. From Aylesbury. That's the Aylesbury crew. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well done. Yeah, I can see Daniel there. Where's Jack Daniel joining us from? I'm joining from Manchester. What? Yeah, that's a long, that's even further, further than Manchester. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's 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 thank God for him. 
Wonderful. Let's clap. Uh, you are not clapping. Wow. Okay. Who else is joining us? Stella. I can see Stella there. Plumstead Village. Plumstead. This, it's like Plumstead is winning this night. It's going to hurt you. Wow. Okay. I can see Tilade. Where are you joining us from? From Luton. From Luton. Thank you very much. Let's give her a wonderful round of applause. Wow. Hadassah. Where are you joining us from? I'm joining from Oxford. Oxford. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Let's give her a round of applause. Let's just do that quickly. Wonderful. Yeah, I can see Judah there. Where is Judah joining us from? Mansfield. Is he? Yes. Ah, Judah is joining us from Mansfield. Let's give, let's give me a round of applause. No. Okay, Providence, where are you joining us from? We're well, joining from Sunderland. Oh. From Sunderland. In that place, I can see, I can see your faces. What's happening? Oh, wonderful. I can see Gideon there. There's Treasure. There's... Who else is there? Providence and... Who else? Ebenezer. Right. Ebenezer. Wonderful. Wow. That's powerful. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Who else is there? Let me see. Now, is that Naomi? Okay. Let's go. I'm missing somebody. Yeah. Daniel is gone. Yeah. Joaquin. Where are you joining us from? I'm joining from Ellsbury. We don't, we can't see you. We need to be sure it is you. Let's see your face. Ah, wonderful. Thank you very much. And keep it like that. Ibi, where are you joining us from? Um, New, New Modern. New Modern. Ooh, that's the, towards um, Croydon, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. That's wonderful. God bless you. You are welcome powerfully. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's clap for them himself and Joachim. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen fruitfulness. Where's fruitfulness joining us from? Fruitfulness. Okay, let's go to... Yeah, okay, where are you joining us from? Irith. Irith. Wow. That's towards... Uh, Plumstead area as well. Wow. God bless you. You're welcome. Let's give him a round of applause. Wonderful. Uh, Olan Rewaju Oluwashi, where are you joining us from? You can unmute. Sheffield. Sheffield. God bless you. Let's give him a round of applause. Wonderful. I can see CRM City of Refuge. Is that from Sheffield as well or somewhere yeah, else? Sheffield. Sheffield? I don't I think that person is okay. Uh let's see. Uh who else? Uh, yeah, there's Sheffield. somebody here. Yeah. It is Sheffield. Sheffield. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Representing the whole of that church. Wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And then I've got X I A O M I. How do I pronounce that name? Yeah. You typed in the box. I don't know how to pronounce it. Is that Naomi with a two three one o six R N D O A? Oh, that's a long name. Exactly. Um, Mute yourself. Anyway. Let's 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 give ourselves. Okay, I can see Victoria Owen. Please, can you let us know where you're joining us from? On mute. Central London. Central I'm here London. With my, yeah, wow. with my kids. God bless you. Let's give her, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. It's it's wonderful. Ah, there's lovely in there. Where are you joining us from? From Aylesbury. Oh, wow. Aylesbury, God bless you. You are welcome. Let's give her a round of applause. That's our mommy there. Yes, and there's Temilolua. Yeah, she, she said she can't change her name. Okay. 
That's wonderful. It is well. God bless you. Okay. Wonderful. Is that correct? The name is correct now. Okay. Wonderful. So let's give, let's all give ourselves a round of applause. Let's put our pictures up and let's clap. Let's unmute yourself. Let's, let's see. Let's hear a loud clap. A loud clap. And let's shout hallelujah. Like people who wonderful, wonderful. This is powerful. This is great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This is glorious. Wonderful. So that's wonderful. So I'll put up, I think there's some comment there, but let me quickly put on that uh video so we can finish with that video and then we'll pray together. But if you've got questions, please make sure you put it in the chat box and uh, we'll take those questions. But um, mute yourself and um, let's take the video. Let's watch the video just a minute. Let me skip that. Each one represents a day. I thought it would be just another quickie. Okay, just a minute. On one minute, one minute, one minute, one minute. Good. Was born from fear. I thought it would be just another quickie, but my husband went hard on me for two straight hours after trying a simple secret mixture. It might sound strange. I don't see it. Originally, these were survival tools, desperate attempts to escape something that terrified them deeply. And while children go out in costumes, on that same night, in different places, there are still those who take this date with a sinister purpose. I don't see it. For some see yeah, just a minute. The cultists, Halloween remains a sacred day. When I'm finished. Night, dark rituals and pacts. Thing even more disturbing. The ancients believed that if they didn't perform these rituals, they would be surrendering their souls to the power of spirits. This desperate search for protection led them to extreme and macabre practices. Today, Halloween seems harmless. You see it in shopping malls, schools, even in your neighbors' houses. Stores are filled with costumes, pumpkins, and candy. Children eagerly await that night to hit the streets, smiling behind monster and ghost masks in search of treats. Halloween has become a global celebration, a ritual that crosses borders, whether you're in the United States, Mexico, or Brazil. Everyone participates. No one questions what they're celebrating. But if you stop to think about it, something doesn't add up. Why this obsession with the macabre why is what appears to be a simple night of fun filled with symbols of death, darkness, and fear? The answer is hidden in plain sight because Halloween, though modernized, remains what it has always been. A celebration of darkness, of the occult, of what lurks in the shadows. Today, it's hard to see because it's wrapped in an entertainment package, but just because something is popular doesn't make in fact, it's even more dangerous because it deceives you, makes you let your guard down. And that's where we Christians come in. Should we really participate in a celebration that honors something that goes completely against what we believe? The Bible is clear. In the Gospel of Matthew, we read, He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And Halloween, in its essence, continues to glorify death. No matter how much we dress it up, no matter how much candy we hand out, at the end of the day, Halloween symbols, the skulls, the witches, the ghosts, are a tribute to darkness, to the occult, to everything the Bible warns us to flee from. But what's most surprising is how we've allowed it. It's shocking how society has accepted Halloween without question. We don't just accept it, we celebrate it. And what's even more puzzling is that some Christians do too. We've let ourselves be carried away by the current, forgetting what it truly means. At this point, it's easy to understand why most people don't see it. We've been bombarded with images that make us believe Halloween is just another holiday. Movies, stores, TV shows, everything presents it as something normal. 
But behind this normalcy lies a message that remains as dark as ever. Halloween, though dressed in modernity, still drags its roots in paganism, in the worship of what is dead and dark. And meanwhile, the true message of Christianity, which is life and light, becomes overshadowed on this night of darkness. The saddest part is that, in a world where we celebrate life so much, we've come to normalize a celebration that exalts the opposite. We live in a culture that, without realizing it, has opened its doors to death. Just look around us. We see movies that glorify horror, costumes that mock the sacred, children immersing themselves in a world of ghosts and demons, as if it were all part of a game. And this is where an important question arises. How did we get to this point? How did we end up celebrating what we once feared? The answer is unsettling. Little by little, we've been seduced by the culture surrounding us. We've been told there's nothing wrong with enjoying a night of fear, that it's okay to participate in a celebration that despite its dark roots has become innocent. But that's not true. Halloween remains what it has always been, a celebration of death, disguised as fun. And so as Christians, we must ask ourselves, where does our testimony stand? What are we teaching our children when we dress them as witches and monsters? It's a sign that we've forgotten who we are. We've allowed the world to define our celebrations instead of being the ones who show the world the true path. As Christians, we are called to be light in the midst of darkness. And Halloween, no matter how much we try to soften it, remains a celebration that glorifies the opposite of who we are. It's remarkable how something so dark has become part of our lives, almost without us noticing. But now that we know, we can't ignore it. We can't continue participating in something that directly contradicts our faith. And though the world tells you it's just a game, that it's harmless, you know the truth. You know that behind those masks and pumpkins lies a story that glorifies death. And as Christians, our mission is to celebrate life, not death. The Bible warns us clearly, what seems harmless can corrupt our spirit. And Halloween is no exception. You can't open the door to death and expect there to be no consequences. Year after year, we're repeating a story that glorifies death and Satan. And the enemy knows how to disguise itself as fun. Halloween remains what it has always been, a night that honors death and fear. And you, as a Christian, do you really want to participate in that? So that's called a finder's fee model. I find a house. It's a good deal. It's easy to feel overwhelmed. Everyone around you celebrates it. Society pushes it hard. Schools organize parties and your children might already be excited about dressing up. It feels like you're alone, trying to swim against an unstoppable current, but you don't have to follow the crowd. You don't have to participate in what the world presents as normal. Indeed, there is a different path, a path that not only rejects darkness, but powerfully embraces light and life. Imagine a night not of terror, but of hope. Instead of skulls and ghosts, there is light. Instead of fear, there is peace. There's no need to participate in a celebration that glorifies death when we have something far greater to celebrate, life in Christ. You don't have to settle for what the world offers. You have a much better alternative. November 1st, right after Halloween, is All Saints Day, a day that celebrates those who lived their lives devoted to God, who overcame evil not with fear, but with faith. It's a reminder that holiness is real, that light always conquers darkness. In the Bible we read, Okay, thank you so, so, so much. Let's quickly round up and uh, so we can continue. Our holiday 
Now, that's something very, very important that we just looked at. That movie shows us quite a number of things. If you were here at the beginning, you will have watched um, um, the movie from the beginning. But like I said, I will share the link. I'll put a link in the um, comment section. You um, can watch it as a family. But what the key part of it, I know some of it is talking about um, the Eucharist and all the other stuff. That's not my main focus. My focus really is on the fact that this is a celebration. Halloween is a celebration of darkness, fear, death. And our faith as Christians is a celebration of life. It's a celebration of Jesus. It's a celebration of light. The Bible tells us something. It says light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot overcome it. And that's what we must always remember. So when you go to school, you are going to school as the light. You are going to school as the one to bring people from darkness into light. And you must not think of yourself less. Always remember that. And I share with people, all the schools where I've worked, I've started a Christian union. I've gathered people to pray. I don't, I'm not afraid to do that because that's my fate. If people are willing to celebrate something else, I'm bold enough to celebrate my fate. And students can make that request. You can tell them, please, is there a room where we can pray at break? I want to say, I, want, I, I need a room. We need a room, two of us, myself and my friend. We want to have a classroom where we can come during break to just say a word of prayer or to just read the Bible in a quiet time. We don't want to go to the playground. They will find a room for you. If your parents go to school and say, listen, my children like during break to have a quiet time for 10 minutes of their break. Can they be given a place where they can do that? They will find a place for you. You see, if you don't ask, you don't get. You must always ask. The same way people who are of a different faith will come and they say, we want to find a place to pray at 1 30 or 1 40 or whatever time it is and they give them a space you also have that opportunity to also pray as well so let's understand that so um before we close i just want to throw it open does anybody have a question or you want to say something there's something that has bothered you with regards to what we've said tonight don't just unmute uh, calm down i've not finished those of you who are up there you need to calm down. Yeah. Calm down. <laughs> you calm down there for me. Yeah. And then I will, I will give you I'll give you a chance to actually. I like that. That's my one one is one is a gonna finish. Okay. okay. I'll call you. Um so, so that's important. Who created Halloween? Hold on. Let me finish saying. So if you've got a question or there's something that we've discussed tonight that looks like uh, you don't really understand, please, you're free to ask that question. And then you need to ask it. Um, yeah. So, okay. Who's going first? Who's got a question? Okay. Yeah. Peter Grant. Yeah. Okay. Unmute yourself. Just one person. Okay. My question is, why did God create Halloween? Okay. If you've been listening, God didn't create Halloween. The devil, the devil planned it with some people. And that's where we said it was, it, start, it started as a pagan festival. So before the church started coming to this area, they used to celebrate that. So I will send a clip of the video so you can watch the video again. This time around, you'll watch it quietly. No talking, no messing, no no jumping up and down the chair. So you can listen very well and you can get the full story. Yeah? So that's it. Any other question? Uh, let's see. Who's got a question there? Or oh, somebody wants to add. I think some of our mummies are here. Maybe they want to add one or two things. Uh, uh, I was wondering if... Um... That's, you know how some people said, well, I heard that Halloween was actually an event like yeah. Mock the Devil, was an event to Mock the Devil, but somehow got changed to like 
witch the witchcraft and all that. Well, is that true? Sorry, ask that question again. I said that you see, like I heard that Halloween was an event to mock the devil at first, or something like that. Okay, you see, one of the things you must understand is that the 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 people of the world will try everything to try and bring confusion, to make it look okay, and they will try and twist the story so that it looks normal. We've looked at it. The root of that festival or what is called Halloween didn't have anything to do with mocking the devil. It was a way for them to protect themselves. They didn't know God. They didn't have any other thing. It's just like in my culture. There are certain things they do. If you want to go out in the night, they will say you should do this. If you are pregnant, they say put a stone in the, within your wrapper and tie it there so that the devil cannot come into your stomach and steal your baby. You know, people just formed different things because they didn't know better so halloween started like that they were afraid because they felt there was a there was a there was a a a, 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 a saying that the dead used to come back and they would want to come and visit people's home and they were afraid and they began to to do things to sort of like prevent those spirits coming back into their homes and that's where those practices came and they used to sacrifice uh, animals and even in some cases human beings to be able to appease the devil from attacking them or coming into their homes so that's where all those things started from but the key thing is that it has not changed the devil might change the way he's doing it his goal is still to steal to kill and to destroy that's the aim of the devil so that's all this is about to make sure you don't you are not sensitive to god you don't trust god you don't want to pray to god people who are going to go out tonight now ask them whether they've studied their bible today bible is not in their life they're not interested okay any other question our mommies any question any any addition there pastor tilade pastor Nkechi, any 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 addition anything you want to add for us Oh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, mine is not uh, is not a question. Oh, I really you. appreciate and thank you for organizing this. Yeah. I'm just going to ask: Will it be possible to share the link uh, on the IMF Oxford Midlands uh, so that we can share also with our children who are not able to join today? Yes, it's. I've actually what I've done is that because our kids are online here at the moment, I've recorded it. It's a we've recorded the session. So when we finish, I'll send the the link. To, for you so that people can um watch watch it afterward yeah thank you sir yeah uh, awesome thank you very much you're welcome yeah uh yeah i think i can see yeah okay yeah somebody's raised their hand there yeah please unmute yourself yeah 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 come and speak yeah you can speak now um i thought I thought ghosts weren't real. Okay. Yeah, it looks like they're not real, but ghosts, when you talk about ghosts, ghosts are just demons. So it's the devil that disguises itself and you know, uses evil spirits to try and look like it's people who are who have died. And it's, it's all a way to confuse people. Is the devil that is behind ghosts so it's not that ghosts are not it ghosts are not real people it's not the person that died that is coming back It's the demons they're called familiar spirits so what they do is they get information about somebody who is died because you know the devil has information he knows certain things that's why he gives you a thought he knows you want you don't want to go and steal that 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 chocolate or you don't want to tell the lie he knows in your heart that you are you are struggling he gives you the idea so he knows certain things so he can get that information and come back and try and show people as if oh it's your old uh, uncle that died or oh, it's your auntie that died 10 years ago that is here they're called familiar spirits yeah daniel you got a question so ghosts are not real ghosts it's the devil and his demons that disguise themselves yeah daniel you got a question uh, thank you. It's actually the uh, Daniel and uh, Daniel's mom. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. This has been very, very educative because I've been part of it from the start. Okay. Uh, and we thank God for your life for organizing something like this. Uh, thank you so much, the Lord. We greatly reward you. I just wanted to ask, uh, 
Is it because well, I don't even know you? Somebody, a friend in London just shared the link with us. So, and I just thought, oh, this is a good one. So, what, but now that you're talking about the link, is there any possibility of us having it as well to share with other people? Okay. What I what I'm going to do is um I will I will put in my let me let me see if I can put in my uh, YouTube address so that you can have an um, have a link to it or I'll put in my email address as well. Okay, so, sir. thank so you. So that you can get in touch with me and then we can get get um the details of what we've done today. And oh, so thank you, sir. That would be great. So I'll, I'll put. Uh, let me just put my. I think the best way is just, let me just put my phone number there okay. so that if if you can just send me a message. On WhatsApp, Okay. Uh, Thank you so much. And then um, this is we, we are from the Charismatic Renown Ministries, uh, City of Liberation. So and uh, we are based in Aylesbury. Uh, so we 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 just feel it's it's important that we we attack this matter, and we run we we run a Bible club every Saturday from eleven o'clock to twelve, yes. using the same link. It's a Bible club for young people. So if your kids are available, they can join us every Saturday from seven uh, from eleven to twelve. Amen. Oh. So my number is in the. Oh, I only sent it to one person. Sorry, let me, let me put it. I didn't know there was one name. Uh, everyone. Okay. Oh seven eight one. Yeah, any other question, please, or any other contribution? Amen, amen. I just want to quickly add, can I just share a little bit? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so just to add to what we've listened to today, awesome time, very rich, we bless God. But I'm just reminded of the scripture in Genesis, the Bible says, in the beginning God said, let there be light, mm. and there was light. There's a song in Yoruba. I'm sorry for those of us, those of us that don't understand Yoruba. It just says, uh, "Darkness be pushed back because there is light." Mm. There is no darkness anywhere. The only reason why there is darkness is because light is refusing to shine. The Bible says light came and darkness could not comprehend it. Anytime light decides to shine. Darkness must subject must be subjected to light. Light overpowers it. And that's what the Bible says in the in Genesis. God said, Let there be light, and there was light. So you and I are the lights of the world. If we refuse to shine, people will continue in this darkness. They don't know. That's why they continue in the darkness. And somebody was asking a question: why are people celebrating? Uh, 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 Halloween. The celebration of Halloween, like we heard, is a is a Celtic practice, an ancient practice. People didn't know better. The same way our own forefathers in Africa were, you know, were into, you know, darkness and and things like that. And until hope came, until light came, and they knew better, and they began to renounce those practices. The same way you and I are here to bring hope, to bring light to our friends in school, to our colleagues at work. We must shine the light so that the darkness can disappear. They are only thriving because nobody is telling them. Nobody is explaining to them. My prayer is that the Lord will grant us boldness. The Lord will help us and will be able to declare the light that we are. Amen. 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 Thank you so, so, so much for that. Pastor Tilade, any Sharing anything you want to add? Okay, okay, you can unmute. Yeah. Um. Sorry. Just give me one minute. One second. Doctor Funke. You want to share something with us as well? Sorry about that. Right, it's more of I uh, just want to add to what uh, uh, Lovelyn said to do with light. 
um because i was using that um that same um about light i was discussing with someone not too long ago about this light uh god has asked us to shine our light so each one of us will represent the light of god that's what god is expecting so all the children in um, uh, i have devi devi udai there so have about five or six of them there each one of you you are supposed to shine forth the light of god each one of us we are meant to shine the light of god so if myself as a light and this is my this is my touch light or this is a candle or this is my bulb if I go into a place, there is so much that this light um, that I will be able to see in a dark place. There will be so much. So there will be more darkness than light. What God is expecting of us is for us not to hide our lights, but to shine our light. So everywhere you are going, you're having it at the back of your mind that's I am the light, and that's my light. It must be seen. My, my, that my light must shine. The more we shine our light, the more that's the things that are dark, darkness, the more it will, you know, it will disperse. Gradually, you have more light, more, more than darkness. But if we are in places, maybe in our school, in our home, in our community, wherever it is, we are hiding our light because we are shy. We are afraid. We don't want people. Oh, people will not like me. They will be wondering, what are you talking about? You know, we're looking for excuses and we are hiding our light. Then more dark things, more horrible things we continue to happen. So one thing, one of the one more thing, one thing I want us, not one thing. And with what all we've had had today, you've watched, you've listened to add to it recognizing that you are the light how do you shine that, that your the light that you are the, your words your the way you act the things you say talking about christ doing everything that you need to do that represents light anything that represents darkness you're not a part of it that way you're shining the light and uh that is what God is expecting us to do. So I thought to just add that to it. Thank you. Thank you so, so, so much for, for that. We are going to sing a song now. You're all going to put on your camera. We're going to all unmute ourselves. And we're going to sing this song together. Oh, Dr. Funke, you wanted to add something before we sing. Yeah, please. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, sir. Oh, oh, oh. Hello, everyone. Hello, God bless you. Uh, I know we've had a lot. You know, we've talked about a lot of things today. It's just a little thing I want to add is that, especially for those of us that came from Africa, you know, masquerade. So I'm sure maybe we've seen in one, in the community before. What I just want to add is the fact that, you know, if we would not participate in masquerade, you know, the festivals back home, we shouldn't participate in Halloween as well, just because it's more decorative or it's more fanciful, still doesn't change the fact that it celebrates the devil. So just, you know, what to remember or to take home with us is that if we will not participate in masquerade festivals, then we shouldn't participate in Halloween because it's the same devil that is, you know, they celebrate. It's just that it's the Onyibo version of Masquerade Festival. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank yes. you so, so, so much. Yes. Amen. So please, let's let's put on our camera and we're going to sing this song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. So let's, cameras, let's see. Let me see all the cameras on. Everybody will want to see all your faces. Nobody's hiding. But this two, three minutes when we're going to sing and we'll pray. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, 
If he's still there, okay. That's Pastor Winford, please can you pray for us if you are still there? Oh. Amen. Yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Let's pray. Hey, let's Father, we pray. just want to thank you. We give you all the praise, all the glory. Oh. We thank you for the opportunity you gave okay. unto us and to our children. And uh, uh, even, oh God, the life of our pastor, Pastor Akin, who organized this. We want to thank you because you are a faithful God. We just pray your blessing, oh God, upon every child who joined, oh God, even for this one hour. We pray, oh God, that Lord, the wisdom that you impacted, oh God, in their lives, they will be able to use it to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. Indeed, their light will continue to shine anytime they hear concerning Halloween. They will know that it is not good. They will know that it is not associated with what I believe. They Amen. will know that only the light of God will continue to shine upon their lives. We cover them in the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. And we say, Father, they are going out and they are coming in. You will continue to preserve. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Want to thank you for the parents, oh God, that Lord, you will give them the wisdom to, to be able to answer. Whenever the children are asking, why is it that we don't celebrate Halloween? Lord, the wisdom you will give unto every parent in the name of Jesus. Thank Amen. you, oh God, yes, Father, for, 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 for the increase of your kingdom. The Bible says of the increase of your kingdom, there yes, shall be no end. Okay. So we Amen. thank you. We bless your name. Thank yes. you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let's share the grace together. The grace Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ. The love, the love of, the love of God. God. And the fellowship of the, the Holy Spirit. And we have Olu Ashin that joined us. Thank, Thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Enjoy you. Thank Get you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.